So about a month ago, we made this video here on the YouTube channel, how Andre Kuzmenko is saving Jonathan Huberdeau's career. And to be frank, Andre Kuzmenko for the Calgary Flames has been really good as of late. But what I wanted to do was talk about a different savior here in this video. No, it's not anybody that's on the Calgary Flames right now, but is somebody that is no longer a part of the organization. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about Vancouver Canucks center Elias Lindholm. A guy who has been injured for a while, he's been out of the lineup for a while. He may come back during the postseason, he may come back a bit earlier, who really knows. But Elias Lindholm has been in a pretty precarious spot with the Canucks since, in his limited stint with Vancouver, he has only accrued 9 points in 22 games played. A pretty steep drop-off from the 32 points he had in 49 games, which in turn is a drop-off from what he had last season and the year before that. 82 points in 82 games played in 2021-2022. Now, Lindholm was a top two-way center. He could score goals. He was playing with Kachuk. He was playing with Gaudreau. He was a great guy. But because his contract is expiring at the end of this season and the reported amounts that he wanted was hovering in the eight plus million dollar range, the Calgary Flames could not re-sign him. They sent him off to Vancouver. They got Kuzmenko in return and Kuzmenko has been pretty good. Lindholm has not been so. The guy had scored two points in his previous two games before leaving the lineup with the injury that he had. But in the stint before that, I mean, you can take a look at this here. Andre Kuzmenko's trade return wasn't really giving the Canucks too much. He had one point in the span of, what is that, three, six, nine, twelve games or whatever it was. Lindholm has had a really rough go with the Vancouver Canucks. But what I wanted to focus on in this video was a post made on the Calgary Flames subreddit from about a week ago that pretty much brings up how not only was Andre Kuzmenko a savior of this team, but maybe Lindholm himself was too. Let's take a look and read through this piece. Man, I love Elias Lindholm, but from the sounds of it, the guy really dropped the bag. We offered him something like 8.5 or 8 or was it even more? I don't remember. But either way, he turned it down and since then his value has been dropping. He can probably still land up to 6 or 6.5 six somewhere maybe, but either way, I hope this will be somewhat of a lesson to other players that perform well for us to take the offer when it's there. It's been rough having so many large contracts get rejected from players lately, like Kachuk, Lindholm, Johnny Gaudreau, Noah Hannafin. On that note, however, I'm very grateful that both Hannafin and Lindholm turned down their offers. We needed desperately for players like them to force a retool, gave our fans something to look forward to. Every day, the Lindholm trade has been more exciting. I love Andre Kuzmenko. He's so fun to watch compared to Lindholm this season. Brewster is exciting to see. Hopefully, he's up with the Wranglers next year. Also, I'm really excited about that Vegas unprotected 2026 pick from the Hannafin trade. Lots can happen in two years, and maybe they'll finally fall off by then. Also, Miramanov has been fun to watch. Super glad Connie locked him up at two more seasons at 1.2 million. Another quick note revisiting the Kachuk trade, even if people are still not 100% on Huberto and his contract, that Mackenzie Weger contract is fire. The man's quickly became a fan favorite, deservingly so. Anyways, thanks for the rant, fellow Flames nerds. Now, the thing is, look, this piece is probably written on somebody's smartphone. You can definitely tell by some of the language that is used. I had to retake a few of these sentences here, but... It's a very interesting idea brought up here. Hey, we offered Lindholm a pretty beefy contract, but he turned it down. I'm kind of grateful, though, that both Hannafin and Lindholm turned down their offers. And here are some of the comments that go out there in reply to this. Elias Lindholm saved us from ourselves. Noah Hannafin, we would have overpaid, but to be honest, I would have been okay with it. This defense can be a bit hard to watch. Long term, though, we're certainly heading in the right direction. Time to hit on some draft picks, keep the kids developing, and get ready for the new building. Go Flames, go. And this seems to be the angle that I don't think many people have brought up too much elsewhere online, that Elias Lindholm not accepting whatever offer it was that the Calgary Flames gave him, in a way, put him in a worse spot. Because if he was offered, let's say, 8x8, eight eight, let's just say 60, 65 million dollars on a full contract, if he was offered that and he said no because he felt that he could get more in the open market, okay, that's fine, you can believe in yourself. 
but you have to follow it up. You have to be able to live up to your word. You were a point-per-game guy playing with two 100-point scorers in Kachuk and Gaudreau, and you declined afterwards. You declined when playing with Jonathan Huberdeau. You declined when playing with some of these other guys. You got sent over to Vancouver, where you were the prize in that trade. And all of a sudden, your cap dump replacement in Calgary is playing so much better. Lindholm has not been good with the Vancouver Canucks. You can say there's like some stability there. There's some good two-way face-off winning, penalty-killing play that he's got. And look, once the playoffs comes around, that can change the entire narrative. But for now, based off of what we had seen out of Lindholm in the games that he has played so far, he has not been up to snuff. He has not been an $8 million caliber guy. Not nearly. If the Vancouver Canucks wanted to re-sign Lindholm, based off of what he's provided the team in the small stint that he's played so far, like any Anything above maybe five and a half million or five million is too much. He hasn't been that good. So when it comes to his contract negotiations in the offseason, look, the Canucks are probably not going to re-sign him, especially if his contract demands are still in that $8 million range. But if he goes to the market, a team really has to believe in what it was that Lindholm had to bring when he was playing with two of the best players in the world instead of what we're seeing here when he's playing with some of the other best players in the world and Pedersen and Quinn Hughes and everything and he's still not able to produce points. Like, I get it. There's a defensive responsibility that Lindholm brings that some of these other guys do not have, but it's only two way if you're contributing two ways. Like, offense still is one of the ways to contribute and he hasn't really been doing that much. So for Elias Lindholm, he really needs to get everything back in the shape once the playoffs gets around. If he can be the shutdown defensive zone force, penalty killing force with Vancouver in the playoffs, let's say they go on a run, let's say they make the third round, and Elias Lindholm is like going Kessler mode in 2011, then okay, that seems like it could be a really good acquisition, and the Canucks would have benefited from that. But so far, I mean... It's easy to see why Flames fans are saying, yeah, Elias Lindholm saved us from ourselves. If this decline in Lindholm's profile was inevitable, if he just accepted that $8 million deal at the beginning of the year, or at some point last year when he was initially eligible for an extension, then what? Elias Lindholm will be locked up until he's 37 years old or whatever it is. He'll be on Calgary until the end of 2033. And he'll be declining then too. Like that could have really screwed over the Flames if he had just accepted that contract and had he declined at the same time. So I kind of believe this idea. Elias Lindholm saved the Calgary Flames from themselves. Like it's very, very strange to think about, but at the end of the day, this is how the cookie crumbles, right? Elias Lindholm got traded over for Andre Kuzmenko, who is a guy who right now is actually producing pretty well and who is on a contract for one more season at a pretty stable five point something million dollars a year. That's not to say that Andre Kuzmenko is guaranteed to being good. Like, obviously, you know, you look at this and you say, hey, he's got nine points in his last five games. He's been very, very good. How sustainable is that long term? It's not guaranteed, but at the end of the day, this is a player that can help out the Calgary Flames. The power play has looked a lot better than it has been ever since the Lindholm departure. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're a Calgary Flames fan, what are your thoughts on Lindholm saving your team from yourselves? And what are your thoughts on Andre Kuzmenko and his bolstered up play? I mean, the guy's got multi-point games after multi-point games after multi-point games. Y'all are losing, but he's still finding ways to score beautiful goals and score points. This is what happens when Andre Kuzmenko is confident. He's good. It just doesn't happen too often, unfortunately. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Elias Lindholm and Andre Kuzmenko. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read more of this post and the comments below on your own time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.